Hey, it's Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company and InkNouveau.com. In this Fountain Pen 101 video, I'm going to be talking about pen part terminology. So what I want to do is I want to lay out all the basic pen parts so that as I'm talking in future videos, you understand what parts I'm actually talking about. Because before you understand how all the pen parts work, you need to know what the parts are. So that's what I'm going to cover in this video. The fountain pen nib is really the most important part of the pen. It's going to make the biggest difference in terms of how the pen is going to write. As you can see, there's a lot of different styles. It's a, one of the most decorative parts of the pen. It's usually where you're going to find the company's logo. It's all different kinds, shapes, styles, sizes, uh, designs. They're really a marvel of modern engineering. They can be made of gold or steel, even titanium, other alloys as well. Uh, but the nib is really what is going to get most of the work done in a pen. The tip, or what's known as the tipping material, is this very, very small ball that's welded onto the end of the nib. This is the part of the nib that's actually touching the paper while you write. It's usually some kind of iridium alloy or some other hardened metal that's harder wearing than the gold or the steel that you would normally see used for the rest of the fountain pen nib. The slit on a fountain pen is this line that splits straight down the middle of the nib. That is what serves as the function for the capillary action that draws the ink from the feed to the very tip so that the pen will actually write. Fountain pen nibs have what are called tines. Because you have a slit going straight down the middle that completely splits that nib in half, you have tines just like you have on a fork, except these tines are very, very close together. Together with the slit, they provide the capillary action to actually move the ink forward to the tip. But when you're referring to one side or the other, those are tines. The breather hole is this hole right here at the end of the slit in the middle of the nib. It can be round, it can be heart-shaped, but really the main function of this is to provide some extra air because ink can't flow without air behind it to support it. So, different companies will have different designs. Some nibs don't have them on there. It's not necessarily a requirement. It's all part of the nib design. But that's what that little hole is called, is the breather hole. The wings of a fountain pen are these parts here. Well, you can kind of guess why they're called wings, because they come out and then go back. It's very fitting that I just happen to be using a Pelican pen for to demonstrate the wings. But whenever we're talking about the wings, that's what we're talking about. The feed is the part that backs up to the nib. The feed is this black part right here. It's not always black. It can be different colors depending on the manufacturer. It can be different styles. It can look differently. But the most important part is that the feed is the part that gets the ink from the pen up to the nib so that you can write with it. The channel, otherwise known as the feed channel, is the part of the feed where the ink actually travels down. I'm actually going to pull this, chan this feed out of the pen and you can see that there's this very small slit that's cut that goes all the way through on the top of the feed. This is where the ink actually travels down to get to the front where it mates up with the nib. This little slit right here, that is called the channel. Looking at another part of the feed, you can see that it's made up of these tiny little fins. Now what do these fins do exactly? These fins act as regulators for the ink. So these fins will fill up with ink in that space in between as you're writing. And since this is such a very small slit cut here in the feed channel, these wing, or sorry, these uh, fins will hold extra ink so that when you're writing faster or with more ink demand than this little feed channel can provide, it pulls the ink from here and allows you to still have a continuous flow no matter how fast you're writing. The way that a fountain pen fills, when you're talking about filling from a full bottle of liquid ink, is through this little place called the filler hole. So I'm flipping the pen over. This black part here is the feed. And this part right here, this is the filler hole. That's where the ink is actually going to draw into the pen. What that means is that when you are inserting your pen into your bottle of ink, 
it's not the tip that's going to be drawing the ink through. It's actually this filler hole. Even though the ink comes out through here, it's got to go in through this hole. So make sure that whenever you're filling a fountain pen, you're completely submersing that nib all the way up to the grip section so that that filler hole can get to the ink. The body of the pen is generally referred to as this section right here that houses the ink. It's not the front part that houses the nib. The body generally refers to the back part of the pen. The grip or the section, grip section, I've heard it called, that's this part right here. That's where you're going to be holding your pen unless you're holding it some kind of really obscure way. Um, that's generally where you're going to be holding your fountain pen while you do your writing. So it, it's what houses the nib and the feed and it mates up to the body. It's that intermediary part that's called the section. The reservoir is the part of the pen that actually houses the ink. It's usually stored inside the body. Sometimes it has a cartridge or a converter on the inside. Other times you can actually have the ink stored directly inside the body of the pen and there is no cartridge or a converter inside. There are lots of different filling mechanisms used in different pens, but the reservoir is always what's going to be holding the ink. The threads refer to these little bumpy guys right here. That is what allows one pen part to mate to another. Generally, the only ones you're going to see on a regular basis will be if you have a screw type cap like this pen right here. You'll see the threads right there. That's what mates up to the cap. But there's threads in other places too, such as where the body mates up to the grip section or other parts of the pen such as the finial may have it as well. This one may seem like an obvious one, but this is a pen cap right here. The cap serves a very important function on a fountain pen because you're dealing with liquid ink that's water based. If you don't have this cap on the pen for an extended period of time, the water inside the ink is going to dry out and your pen's not going to work very well. So the cap is a unsung hero in the fountain pen. Finial refers to the cap, the very top part of the cap of the pen. In this case, the body and the cap of the pen are blue, but the finial is a smoke color. It's a decorative item, but it's also functional. It helps to hold on the cap. A lot of times it'll be jazzed up in certain ways. It might have the company's logo on it, like so, but that decorative part always referred to, is referred to as the finial. The clip, almost everybody's familiar with this one, but the clip is the part of the pen that allows you to put it into your pocket. It also keeps it from rolling around. It's a decorative item, but it's also functional too. Not every pen has it, but most of them do. Trim or hardware generally refers to any decorative accents to the pen, such as the clip, the center band, any other decorative rings that you may have on there. That is usually called the trim or the hardware. I hope this was helpful to you. I'll be covering a lot more terms and other things in future videos. If you have any questions, you can always shoot me an email at brian at Thanks for watching and write on.